For today's video, we're going to look at uh, solving a linear program. So this formulation example is in the notes for the class. Uh, we work for a clothing manufacturer as a shop floor supervisor. Responsibilities determine weekly production quantities for the two products, shirts and pajamas. We have cutting the material and sewing materials, two major steps, and we have how much is available for each the sewing department and the cutting department and how much time it takes, how much profit we get, and then we say formulate. So we formulated this in class. Um, so here is the actual formulation. I say let S equal the number of shirts to produce or make weekly, P the number of PJs to make or produce weekly, and then I use the convenience variable of Z for total profit. So we're maximizing Z, which is our total profit, for four bucks for each shirt and three bucks for each pair of PJs. Subject to the constraints for the sewing department, uh, which is 1s plus 0.75p less than or equal to 280. That's in hours. And 1.5s plus 2p in hours again, less than 450. That's the cutting department. Those are considered structural constraints. Then we have bounds or non negativity where s is greater than or equal to 0 and p is greater than or equal to 0. So I want to look at how to solve this problem in Excel because in class all we did was formulate it, we did not actually solve it. So I'm going to do this three different ways. I'm going to do it straight with just regular Excel with the solver add in, and then I'm going to look at two different ways to use the um, add ins from the Jensen guy at Texas. All right, so first let me, I have Excel over here, and I need to set this up. Uh, let me do this and this so we can see it, and maybe make the 75. That should be good. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to set up my spreadsheet so that it's, um, somewhat easy to follow. So along the top I'm going to have the variables. So I have S and I have P. Let me make this maybe like so. And then I'm going to have um, an objective function. I'm going to have sewing, constraint, cutting, and we'll see here we don't have to actually put in the non-negativity explicitly there's an easier way to handle that so here are my, I'm going to put my coefficients here for the objective function uh, so we have 4 and 3 and then over here let's see I'm going to have my left hand side my right hand side and then my inequality in between uh, so sewing is 1 and 0 0.75 and this is less than or equal to my right hand side which is 280 and for my cutting I have a 1.5 and a 2 and again that's less than or equal to 450 and let me do this so I can get it all on the same screen here. Uh, for my left hand side, I'm going to I'm going to go down here and do output, and this will be S and P. So this right here is going to be my output, and right here same thing. It's going to be my objective function. Uh, Right. here's going to be my objective functions, my profit, and down here is going to be the, the how many shirts to make, how many PJs to make. So to get those, we need uh, formulas. So we're going to do equals a sum product of what it is that we're doing, and I anchor that, right, times the objective function. Right, right now it's zero because these are here are blank, so they're zero. So if I put a one in here, that should change to four. If I put a one in here for P, it should be four plus three, right? Seven. If I put a two, it should add another three to it. Right, so that looks like it's working properly. 
And then for the Excel solver, we actually need to set up a, on the left hand side for the solver constraints, we need to have a formula. So we're going to do the same thing, some product of the output times the coefficients. And then drag that down. So it should point to the coefficients for the cutting and the output. So now once we have that set up, looks like we've, we're doing okay here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this big again. Now we need to go to data and off on the right we should see solver. So we click solver and it says set the objective. Uh, it was wherever my mouse was which was not a great pot spot. My objective is this thing in blue, the right hand side, the, the profit. We're going to maximize because it's profit and we're going to by changing the cells that's why I highlighted these in blue these are our variables which are the things we're changing and then we need to add the constraints so we click add the cell reference once the left hand side which contains the the formulas less than or equal to those two. I added them together at the same time because they're both less than or equal to. So a lot of times when I have much bigger problems I try to put all the less than or equal to in the next to each other contiguously. If I have equal to I put those contiguously and greater than or equal to I do also do contiguously. So I click OK. We see that constraint set is there. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. That is what's doing my non-negativity for me. So make sure that that is checked off like it is by default. And then select the solving method. We're doing linear, so we need to do simplex LP. LP is linear programming. So we're going to do simplex LP. We could go into the options, but for our purposes right now, it should be good for this small example. And then if we click solve, we see it asks, do I want to keep it? And then do I want some reports? I want the sensitivity report, so I'm going to click OK. And we see the output. We should make 280 shirts zero pairs of PJs for a total profit of 1120 bucks per week. So that's saying don't create any PJs whatsoever. And then the sensitivity report we come over and look at this stuff. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this in class. I'm not gonna go over this too much right now. Alright, we got the shadow prices and other things. Right? For the reduced cost. So we'll talk about all this stuff in class. So Let's now do this another way. Let's use the add-ins. So we're going to use the same, we should get the same answer. Right? So now I'm going to go to new sheet and I need to actually add the add-ins that we're going to use. So if I go to file, options, add-ins, manage, uh, let's do Math programming and network solver, not network solver. Math programming and LPIP. You build the thing using math programming, you solve it with the solver. Uh, we could also build it with MP model builder, which we might get to also. Click OK. And so now if I go to my date my add-ins tab under ORMM, now I have the math programming. Right. And I'm gonna do linear slash integer and let's call this guy clothing or maximizing number of variables we had two number of constraints we had two integer variables none include minimums and maximums fine uh, sensitivity analysis would be good uh, objective measures profit yep uh, options, let's leave it on the Jensen LPIP and instead of using the Xolver. We can do that, but we could do either one. Click OK. And now this, this setup is a little different um, than what we saw before, than what, the way I like to set it up when I'm doing it individually. So the variable names, we can change those. This is S and this is P. And the constraints, uh, what was it, sewing first and cutting. All right. And I, I had it put in random data. Uh, you didn't, I didn't have to do that. 
uh, lower bounds are zeros upper bounds um, let's uh, let's say a thousand the objective was um, four and three, right? And then under here, are the linear constraints. These are the what is what are the coefficients? Alright. So if I go back over here, the coefficients one and point seven five for sewing, one for shirts, point uh, seven five for PJs, and if I look here for cutting it's one and a half and two point five and two and we had two eighty and four twenty and four twenty our output then will be up here this will be, show us how close we get to these guys all right, all right so notice this is a sum product like we did if you click on it it's using named references and this is our output so this will be our output and our profit will be up here so now we click solve and we see 280 0 with 1120 right. 280 280 meaning that I'm using I'm using up everything for all of this right for both of them so that tells me that uh, we did that we did we did fine with doing that um, if I wanted to use the Excel solver uh, also I did ask it to spit out sensitivity so cutting sensitivity this looks slightly different than what we saw for the or, or normal sensitivity report but very close um, it's telling me whether it's ba it, as is, is in the basis or the lower, lower bound uh, the reduced cost and shatter prices so that's good uh, that's another way to do it uh, there's yet one more way to do it um, so we could go ahead and change this and make it use Excel Solver um, I'm not going to do that but we could do that the the next way we could do uh, let's call this let's let's go up to ORMM now we're gonna do uh, we're gonna add in Go back to my add-ins. Sorry, my options, add-ins, manage Excel add-ins, and I'm going to do MP Model Builder. This will look slightly different as well. Now, if I go up here, I've got MP Model Builder. Builder. I want linear integer model, and I'm going to call this guy Clothing Two, and I'm going to do Tableau. And ask me maximize profit. Yes, number of variables two, two. Uh, no, I'm going to do Jensen LP again. I'll leave the random data in there so I know where to look, and I'll uh, do sensitivity and all this stuff. Click OK. All right, so this breaks it out a little bit differently. Uh, so over here, I can change the names again to S and P and down here this is the coefficient matrix so it's putting stuff in a matrix format um, the name of the constraints I can change over here this was sewing and cutting notice when I do that over here in the matrix it changes so my upper bound again I'm gonna put in a thousand objective was four and three stuff in red leave alone uh, sewing we had 280 hours we had 450 hours for cutting it was 1 and 0.75 1.5 and 2 I believe and then I can click solve and again I get 280 zero uh, the duals come out here right with an optimal profit 1120 and then that one also spit out a sensitivity report right, which looks very similar to what the other one did so that's doing a simple two variable to a constraint two by two in Excel obviously we'd want to use Excel uh, for much larger problems uh, so we'll have to we'll look at some of those as we go throughout as well but that should give you a good idea of at least three different ways to solve this guy 
And that ends this guy, this, uh, this session on solving linear programs with Excel.